Now, before we can talk about reflection properly, we need to know how to draw the waves that are going to reflect. Usually, when we're drawing waves, we can use wave fronts in order to represent the motion of waves. So a wave front is a crest of a wave as it spreads outwards. We can see that in a two-dimensional wave, the crest of the wave won't just be a single line, it'll be a big circle. So by drawing successive wave fronts, we can represent the wave spreading out from this, uh, the starting point. So these are usually used in 2D waves because in one-dimensional waves, the wave fronts would just be dots or close together parallel lines. And in a three-dimensional wave, the wave fronts would in fact be spherical because a three-dimensional wave spreads out in all directions, not just in two directions. In our case though, we can use wave fronts to make a simplified view of what the reflection of light looks like. So of course, in reality, light is a three-dimensional wave, but to make things simpler, and to make it easier to look at, we can use a two-dimensional representation of the wave. Although this isn't the only way of representing a wave. Another way that we can represent waves is by using rays. The rays are the blue lines in this picture. So as we can see, rays are perpendicular to wave fronts. We can see that for all of these rays, at any point, they're going to be perpendicular to any wave fronts that they pass through. It will, of course, point in a direction because it is an arrow, it's a vector, and it will, of course, point in the direction of the wave's velocity. That's straightforward enough. So in this case, because the wave is spreading outwards, all of the rays are pointing outwards. When a wave comes into contact with the boundary between two media, like the boundary between air and water, then it will reflect from that surface. Some of it might in fact pass through the boundary, but at the moment we are only worried about the reflecting part. So the boundary between two media is sometimes called a surface. We can think of a boundary between two media being, for example, the boundary between a piece of glass and air, or metal and air. In each of these cases, there's a surface that separates one medium from the other. As we can see, we've got an odd little perpendicular line here. This is called the normal, and it turns out that it's quite helpful to have this line. In particular, when we're looking at the angle of reflection, so the angle at which this light ray bounces off, this perpendicular line is a very, very useful tool to have. And of course, as we can see from the diagram, we call this the normal. We can say that this line is normal to the surface, or we can simply say that it is a normal to the surface. In either case, it means that we have a straight line perpendicular to the boundary. So when we talk about an incoming wave coming to bounce off a mirror or any surface between two media, then we say that this angle between the incoming ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence. We can also call this ray the incident ray. And so I'm, as I'm sure you can guess, we can have a similar angle for once it's bounced off the mirror or the boundary. When it's been reflected, then the angle between the reflected ray and the normal is called the angle of reflection. So on the left side, we have the angle of incidence and on the right side, we have the angle of reflection. Now, how will these two angles relate to each other? Well, it turns out that they are always going to be equal to one another. That is, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. This is a very important rule if we're ever trying to figure out how we draw reflections of objects, or how we draw the reflections of light rays in physics diagrams. When a wave is reflected from a surface, such as a pool of water, its frequency doesn't change. Can you remember what frequency controls in light waves? It controls the color of the light. So the frequency doesn't change, and this means that the color of the reflection will be the same as the color of the incident ray that created it. And of course, because we're not changing into a different medium, we're still in air, for example, the speed of the wave and the wavelength of the wave don't change either. So that means that if we look at uh, an object in a mirror, it will be the same color as if, we, if it wasn't reflected. So what happens 
exactly when we look into a mirror? How do the light waves behave as we're looking at them?